Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to talk to you guys about the new cut tab of DaVinci Resolve 16. So, this is a new interface that they've added as an alternative to using the classic edit tab over here. And the point of the cut interface is to edit your videos in a way that's a bit faster than if you were taking the slower approach of using the edit tab. Where in the edit tab, you have more full control over doing things like adjusting the settings on your video clips through the inspector. Um, but on the cut tab, you're trying to quickly piece things together and quickly split up your video into clips, trim them, and get your product out the door. So one of the really awesome features in the cut tab is a scrollable timeline. So rather than moving the timeline cursor here, what you can do is actually click on the timeline and scroll through your video. And you'll notice that in DaVinci Resolve 16, it previews up there very well. And what you'll notice is by having the timeline indicator always in the center, it becomes really easy to scrub through your clips and find exactly the part of the video you're trying to edit. They also have an additional timeline up here, which will always show the entire timeline for your video project. So it doesn't matter if it is 45 seconds long or an hour long, you'll always be able to go from start to finish by scrolling through up here. And you'll notice that as we go from beginning to end, the bottom main timeline always has the cursor positioned in the center. So by using these two variations of the timeline, the idea is it becomes really easy to find that point where you need to make a cut. Also, one of the things that they've been working on, which makes it easier to move through the timeline, is their uh, scrubbing feature. So also one of the features of Resolve 16 is that the timeline scrubbing is very responsive now. So if we enable audio track one here, we'll actually be able to hear the audio pretty much in real time as we scrub through the audio clip. Um, regardless of what audio track it's on, we'll be able to kind of hear it as I scrub through the timeline. And, and you'll notice that there's not much of a delay in the responsiveness here. We can basically scrub through the audio track all day and hear at what points we have certain sounds. So that would be really useful when you have dialogue because you can actually scrub through the track and hear some of the voices that someone would be saying. So being able to hear the audio back as you scrub will be really useful for dialogue because you'll be able to actually understand what's being said as you move through the timeline, but you don't actually have it in playback mode. So let's pretend for a second here that this little peak of sound for audio track one is a part we want to make a cut for. So you'll notice here that they don't really provide that many direct controls for editing in the timeline on the cut tab. So what I would recommend instead is that whenever you want to split a clip into two, you use the control backslash hotkey. So on most keyboards, the backslash is right under backspace. So control backslash and that will split a clip into two. Now because my audio track one is a random fire sound effect that's separate from the video, I need to cut that separately. So I can go ahead and do that there. I'll go ahead and mute that audio track for right now so that that's not in the way. So because you don't really switch between timeline tools in the cut tab like you do in the edit tab, you're essentially always in trim mode for editing in the timeline here. So to create a gap in the video, I'm going to just go over here on the timeline, hit control backspace and set another cut. Now one way that's really easy to get rid of this clip is actually just to left click on the side of one of its edges and trim the whole thing away. So wherever you see this little roll of tape in the timeline over a clip you're selecting, you can drag it to shorten and lengthen the clip. And if you drag it all the way to the right side, then that's going to just completely remove that clip from the timeline. And of course you can do that without even pressing your keyboard. All you used there was the mouse. So another thing that's different between the cut workflow and the edit workflow is that you don't really switch between tools like the blade edit mode. You're essentially always in the trim tool. So wherever you click on your timeline, even if you click up here in the full timeline, you're going to be trimming between your clips. So you can click on one side of your clips in order to shorten or lengthen them. And you'll notice here that as I'm adjusting it, it updates both in the preview window at the top and a frame by frame uh, timeline adjuster. So you can see exactly how many frames you're shortening a clip by. It also updates in the middle timeline for the full project and it updates in the bottom at the same time. Also, once you've started trimming on one of the clips between a cut, you can also click up here on the top timeline to do a frame by frame adjustment. So this will be really useful if you want to get an exact number of frames. So for instance, if I wanted to trim exactly 30 frames, which would be one second in a 30 frames per second video, I can drag it to exactly 30 frames very easily. And I don't need to worry about zooming in on the timeline to get better control over it. You have three timelines to work through. So you can easily do big adjustments to your timeline in the middle timeline, moderate adjustments in the bottom timeline, and then precise edits in the top timeline. 
So another thing you can easily do on the cut tab is to hover over the split between two video clips and adjust the starting and ending time of those clips, basically shortening one, lengthening another without changing your overall timeline size um, by left clicking and dragging on them. And then up at the preview window at the top, it'll show you the end frame of the left clip and the starting frame of the right clip simultaneously. So if you drag this, you can get both shots to exactly where you want it uh, with basically one adjustment on your timeline. So another way that you can make a cut in your timeline is to add an extra split to this video clip here on the right. So I'm going to hit control backspace there. So that makes this separate part where we're just going to say we want to remove that entirely as its own thing. You can still hit the control X hotkey to cut it out of the timeline. Or if you want to adjust the starting and end points of a video clip without changing the length in the final timeline, you can go to the center area of your video clip in the bottom timeline. And there should be something that kind of looks like a zero there with two arrows on either side. If you left click on that, you can drag to the left and drag to the right for as long as you have footage to replace the current clip with. Before you let go, you'll be able to see the starting and end frames of your new clip in the timeline. Uh, before you let go. Of course, you can also see these gigantic thumbnails will kind of give you an idea of what's happening in your timeline without really having to go through it. So if you want to quickly add in some new clips to your timeline, they have some really nifty tools over in the media pool. So you can select your video over here, double click on a video that you're considering adding a clip to in your timeline. It'll pop up over here on the right preview window. And you can scrub through the source material timeline to find in and out points that you want to add into your video. Basically, where do you want the clip in the timeline to start and where do you want it to end? Of course, using IO as your in and out point sets. So the tools that you have at the bottom of the media pool on this tab allow you to add clips to your timeline without accidentally overriding anything. And you don't have to really worry about positioning your timeline exactly. So if I hit this more insert button, it's going to add in the clip from my source material selection into the timeline and push everything else to the right. So it doesn't overwrite anything and we don't need to worry about positioning uh, the shot. And from there, we can kind of move this around almost like a puzzle piece. You'll see that the snapping it has is quite nice. So even without positioning this middle timeline perfectly, if I drag this down, it will snap into place where DaVinci Resolve kind of thinks it should go uh, by using some smart detection. So by using these smart snapping and rippling functions, I can do things like grab this middle clip and uh, drag it onto the right side of the third clip and then they'll immediately switch places. So the third clip kind of ripples over to the left and then the right, and then what was the middle clip gets put on the right side. So that gets done without really needing to worry about where your timeline cursor is at or exact positioning. Resolve kind of figures that out for you. Uh, also, if you want to do things like add in a close up, you can do that with a single clip here. So you have your clip selected in the media pool preview window. So I'll in out, add a selection here. And then I can just pop this close up onto video track two with a single clip. So by doing that, uh, it not only puts it into the timeline, but it automatically zooms in on the shot. So I can just drag this and position it to where I want. And if you need editing with finer detail, just remember you always have the bottom timeline for when you want to move things just a fraction of a second or so. So there's a few of these functions there that exist in this media pool. For instance, if you want to pop something onto the end of your timeline or the video portion of it, at least you can just hit a pin and it'll put it to the right rather than at the beginning of the video. Uh, if you want to add a quick transition between two video clips, they have a few buttons here. So dissolve and smooth cut, uh, dissolve probably being the most common video transition. So we can see just with one click, we add in a dissolve, which is a fade between two cuts. And using the middle timeline, I can quickly position over here to another split between two video clips. And maybe we do a smooth cut between those. So that's another one button press. And I can hit play in the timeline. Obviously, that effect takes a little longer to uh, generate entirely. But you can kind of see that going on there. So you can still also add in transitions, titles, and effects in kind of the more classic way where we can just drag them onto the timeline here. Because there's less windows in the cut tab as opposed to the edit tab, 
it's a little cleaner and easier to see everything going on here. And that's obviously good for computers where you only have one monitor. So any of these transitions I want to add in, I can just kind of drag those onto the timeline between two clips. Obviously, you can see that the snapping is quite good. So I'll just position that between two clips and that we have a hexagon iris effect. Likewise, if you need some video effects like adding a blur onto one of your clips, you can drag and drop those onto your clips here with the effects window. So if you want the ability to edit some of the common settings about your video clips in the cut tab, you can left click on a clip and over in the preview window, there's actually a tools box here. So this is sort of like the inspector in the edit tab, though rather than labeling everything with long text titles, you kind of indicated on what setting does what by having little icons. And then you can hover over each setting to see what it actually does. So position X, position Y, what the zoom is. Remember that when we added this clip, it already had a close up zoom effect. So we could undo that by dropping this back down to one, or we can just double click and type in the value we want. So we can just scroll on the setting to get it back to where it was around 1.0. If you can't get it exact, just double click and then type in the value you want. So a value of one there. So on these tools, they do give you many of the common settings like cropping, uh, adjusting the speed of your video playback. So if you want to make it go in times two speed, just go to the speed tab and then make it the speed of two rather than one. So now if we hit space, it's obviously going to play back really fast. So as of yet, I haven't seen any way to open the full inspector in the cut tab, which would kind of defeat the purpose of the cut tab anyway. So if you actually want to change something like the text in a title, you may want to just go over to the edit tab temporarily at some point, and then you can just select that title, and then you can have full control over the details of the title, just like you would have in previous versions of DaVinci Resolve. So if I click on top text over here in the inspector, I can change the text that appears in this title. So I could call this tutorial and uh, maybe I scroll down and do the main text and maybe I'll say DaVinci Resolve 16. Obviously, if you need full control over regular video clips as well, you can left click on them and do keyframing with the diamonds on the right or, or change some of the less common settings that you might need to adjust. So overall though, I really find that the new cut interface of DaVinci Resolve 16 is very cool. It's not only useful for being able to add clips to your timeline easily and move them around without really worrying too much about making mistakes. It really helps to focus your attention on what you're trying to do, which is simply to add clips to your timeline, make simple cuts and trims. And the fact that the cut tab removes a lot of clutter from the screen is really handy if you happen to be working on only one monitor, such as if you have a laptop. Less clutter on a tiny screen means that you're able to focus more on the work that you're trying to do and not getting so distracted by all the text that you would have on screen if you're editing in the edit tab. Uh, so that's going to be pretty much it for this video, taking a look at the new cut workflow of DaVinci Resolve 16. I hope that this video has been helpful for you guys. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future DaVinci Resolve 16 content.